Hello everybody, so Unity's data-oriented technology stack and their entity component system have now been considered a production ready for the past six months or so. So does that mean everything is now working perfectly in the editor? Well, no, unfortunately not. However, despite that fact, I still use Unity ECS every single day. And so in today's video, I just kind of wanted to do like a whole state of Unity dots, just kind of going over where it's at as we close out 2023 and lead into 2024. Is 2024 finally going to be the year of dots? So anyways, I kind of just wanted to make this video based off of my recent experience with developing with Unity Dots, as well as talk about some of the things that I learned at Unity's recent Unite event that I attended in Amsterdam. Now, before we get too deep into it, I do just want to start off with a little bit of an observation that's going to lead into something kind of fun here. So to give a little bit of backstory, ECS 1.0 has been out for a little over a year now. And again, it's been considered production ready for the past six months or so. Now that's not a whole lot of time in terms of game development when you start thinking about you know the scope of some of these projects, and especially if dots and ECS are tuned to you know help you make more ambitious games. These games take a long time to make. Now the reason I bring this point up is because it seems like we've almost seen a little bit of a slowdown in the amount of kind of notable Unity ECS releases as of late. Actually, last year there were a whole bunch of Unity ECS games that came out. Uh, mostly developers who were building off of some earlier versions of Unity ECS before the you know whole um, 1.0 or even the 0.50 release. And so last year I put up a Unity ECS Game of the Year poll. So these were basically the nominees and you can see that V Rising was kind of the clear winner, um, at least on this small little YouTube poll that I put up. So anyways, I thought it would be fun to do something similar this year. And unfortunately I did have a little bit of trouble coming across some notable ECS releases for the year. Now, as I was looking through these games, I wanted to find, you know, notable games that have come out that, you know, most people would kind of generally recognize, as well as games that were actually released in the year, so nothing in early access or anything like that, uh, which there are quite a few other Unity actual ECS games that are available in early access right now. So what I decided to do is kind of expand this out to the Unity Dots game of the year. So the game doesn't necessarily have to be using Unity ECS, but still using Unity Jobs and Burst to an extent that kind of really, you know, fits in the spirit of Unity Dots about you know making these more ambitious games. So here's the list that I came up with. So I'm gonna go through these in alphabetical order. So first we'll start off with City Skylines 2, the city builder developed by Colossal Order, uh, the follow-up to, of course, the mega hit City Skylines. Next up, we have Humanity by THA Limited, this really fun puzzle game where you uh, control a dog directing these crowd of people through all different puzzles, and it is a blast to play. Next up is Mile High Taxi developed by solo developer Cash. John Adams. I originally found out this game on YouTube because he posted a whole bunch of devlogs about it um, and it's really cool to see the performance that he has created out of this game. And finally we have Operation Valor by One Don Studios which is a 27 versus 27 top-down tactical shooter. So these are basically the nominees. I'm gonna do the same thing or I'm just gonna create a YouTube poll and you can vote on you know, what you think the Unity Dots game of the year is going to be. I'll have that poll linked below, but you know, if you're scrolling around on YouTube, hopefully it'll show up for you. And just one other thing to note on this Unity Dots game of the year, actually only two of these use Unity ECS and see if you can guess which two use ECS and which two do not. Okay, so now let's transition talking a little bit about Unity's recent Unite event, which took place in the lovely city of Amsterdam. Amsterdam. So Unity actually flew me out for this event and I'm incredibly grateful that they did that. I think it's really cool that Unity, um, you know, does really cool things like this where they can bring out a bunch of their creators to, you know, their main event for the year. And we get to be there in person with the entire Unity community, learning about all the brand new releases and everything uh, coming to the Unity game engine. So again, I think it's super cool that Unity does this thing and I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity for them to do so. Now going into this event, I wasn't really expecting a whole lot of dot stuff. I know back at GDC when they were just still kind of like getting ready for their 1.0 production ready to release, it didn't sound like they were making a whole lot of efforts into kind of, you know, adding new features to Unity ECS and anything like that. It sounded like they were really just focusing on supporting it and doing bug fixes and everything of that nature. So I wasn't expecting anything major from Unity Dots. And even just looking through the session list beforehand, there wasn't anything related to Dots or ECS or anything like that. So um, again, wasn't expecting a whole lot of stuff on the Dots front. However, when basically the keynote started, it was kicked off by the brand new CEO of the company, Jim Whitehurst. And then pretty much right after that, the next guy came up on stage, 
talked about some brief things about the editor in general, and then actually started to bring up dots. So it was really interesting to see that this was you know, pretty much the first meaningful thing that was brought up in the keynote. Um, you know, and it's really cool that they're kicking off the presentation with that type of thing. And so during this, they showcased a couple games made with Unity ECS. One is called Bear Butt Boxing, which seems to be just, you know, a fun, silly, casual little multiplayer game. And the other one is Hostile Mars. This one I've seen in development for quite some time. You may have seen it um, around the Unity forums. I know the lead developer of this is quite active on there. And it's been really cool kind of seeing little progress updates here there for this particular game and super cool that it got actually you know some good stage time front and center in the unity keynote so i'm very excited for this game to come out but again no major announcements or anything related to dots just kind of you know a little bit of a you know celebration just kind of talking about you know how some developers have been using this in production already um, however later on in the presentation when they actually got into some of the multiplayer specific things they did have a little bit of a d announcement related to dots and that is a new mega city sample so this is the mega city metro the kind of thing with this one is this is also a multiplayer one uh, we do already have a mega city multiplayer but this one is specifically using the universal render pipeline it's really cool because you play this game on just a regular smartphone and it runs no problem they actually had a bunch of phones uh, set up during the showcase and i was able to actually go around and, and play through the game a little bit then later on in the roadmap session there was some more stuff on the multiplayer as well and there was actually this thing which i believe they're calling the multiplayer center which seems to be this kind of like questionnaire almost that you fill out saying you know i want these types of things in my game you know these are kind of the specific genres of game that i'm going to be uh, implementing and then it basically just kind of gives you a list of all the you know recommended packages that you should use like if you should use netcode for entities or netcode for game objects and then you can basically just install all the packages right through there so that i think is going to be a nice feature if you're going to be implementing multiplayer in your games and another interesting thing on multiplayer that wasn't specifically mentioned during the unite keynote but it did pop up on the Unity forums kind of around the same time. But they're actually going to be creating a new, essentially unified netcode where it's basically just kind of one netcode um, that basically can be compatible with game objects as well as entities. Now, this seems to be still a little bit of a ways off, but I'll go ahead and link to this forum post so you can kind of read through the details on it of yourself. But now going back to kind of the main roadmap session, kind of at the end, they brought up, you know, some of the things that are kind of on the horizon. And one of the really interesting points is kind of how they're going to be sort of, I guess, unifying game objects as well as entities. Now, again, this seems to be like something that is still kind of a ways off, but this, you know, has been kind of a goal of theirs for quite a while. And it sounds like they still have some concrete plans to put this in place where essentially we can kind of use ECS to be essentially the backbone of Unity. And then we have kind of all the game objects and everything that most people are used to as kind of this like front end kind of top layer. You know, when this kind of comes to fruition, we're going to you know be able to have the best of both worlds and so we kind of see this coming into effect a little bit with some of the announcements related to the netcode thing that I just spoke about as well as another thing that popped up on the forums a few months ago related to the new animation system which is going to be compatible with both entities and game objects and I know a lot of people are very excited for that to finally get in motion so hopefully we see that very very soon. Now some of the other big announcements from Unite are that Unity is now changing their naming scheme back to just kind of a regular version number so the next one is going to be Unity 6 rather than Unity 2023 and there was a bunch of AI stuff as well. I'm not going to really go into detail on those because I know a bunch of other creators have kind of covered those things in a little bit more detail but there are a couple cool little announcements that uh, might have slipped under the radar that I'm very excited about. So one of them is build profiles. Now back earlier at the beginning of this year, I did a video on build configurations, which were originally required to build DOTS projects. Um, however, they're not anymore because they're not basically being developed anymore. The, that package is still kind of stuck in limbo a little bit. Um, however, you can still use these if you want to, to create these build configuration scripts. And it basically is an asset that stores a bunch of your build configurations. So you can have different build configurations. Like if you're developing a multiplayer game, you can have like a server build, a client build, you can have debug and release builds. So you can have basically all these configuration scripts and then just, you know, whenever you want to run one, you can just select one and hit run. So it kind of, you know, eliminates the step of you creating your own custom build scripts and, you know, kind of saves all these settings off into an asset. So it seems like they're bringing this back in the form of build profiles. Um, so again, very excited to see that one when um, it 
sounds like it's going to be coming out in 2024 with Unity 6. Another interesting one to keep an eye on is WebGPU. It sounds like they're going to be kind of replacing WebGL with WebGPU. Uh, WebGPU is very interesting because basically from a web browser, you can take advantage of a client's graphics card. Um, and I know you can run compute shaders and do all kinds of crazy things that you couldn't necessarily do with WebGL. So I think that's going to be another interesting one to keep an eye on. And it seems like we actually will be able to develop dots projects for web gpu so you know be able to maybe bring some really exciting things to web platforms which would be interesting also at unite the winners of the unity awards were all announced uh, once again i was nominated for the tutorial creator of the year which was super cool to get that nomination from unity uh, code monkey ended up winning it that's well deserved by him he's been putting in a ton of work uh, into his tutorials this past year as well as many years before this so well deserved on that and congrats on the award you go now obviously there were a lot of cool things happening at Unite, but really just my favorite part of Unite was just being able to, you know, connect with a lot of people in the community, you know, meet up with all my friends who are also content creators, as well as people who work at Unity, and get to meet up with a couple people who have been guests on this channel. Here's a picture of uh, myself with Tim and Danny. And it was really cool that I got to meet a few of you and chat with you guys about some of the projects that you're working on. Um, you know, definitely always happy to do that. So anyways, Unite was a ton of fun. Again, I'm so glad that Unity was able to bring me out for this event. It's actually my first time in Europe, so I just kind of took the opportunity to spend you know, a few weeks after that just traveling around Europe, seeing some sites. And I just had a ton of fun, got to see a lot of really interesting places. But now I'm back home in the States and ready to continue developing some awesome ECS content for you guys. So anyways, I was kind of like talking a little bit about where ECS and things are kind of going in the future, but let's talk a little bit more about kind of what's going on right now. So kind of an interesting thing, the previous video that I put up, I was talking about, uh, you know, the Unity ECS 1.1 version that had just kind of came out and talking about some of the updates that came along with that. Well, since then, very shortly after, actually, they actually have now released uh, version 1.2. So that's in a pre-release form right now. So it's kind of interesting that we basically just kind of almost leapfrog from 1.0 to 1.1, just immediately into 1.2. Um, so this, I think, kind of puts things in a little bit of an interesting spot for me about, you know, how I want to go about um, doing this netcode for entities course that I've been working on. I think it's probably best to do this on 1.2. I don't know exactly when the you know full release of 1.2 is going to be coming out, so I'm not sure if it's going to be on a pre-release version. I guess it just kind of depends on timing about when I can you know film this video and edit it and everything like that. But anyways, that's a problem for me to figure out. So again, going back to kind of you know where ECS is right now. So I think it is in an okay state, and what I mean by that is you know everything that is essentially kind of like important, everything that you want to work, you know, the build performance, um, everything, you know, the, the burst compiler, job system, ECS, um, just the whole, you know, entity component system design pattern, everything like that, I think all works fantastic. I, I really enjoy working with it. And, you know, that's kind of one of the main reasons that I continue to use it every single day. However, a bunch of things that, you know, aren't necessarily core to that, but are still, you know, really integral to the development experience, is not really in that good of a state right now. There are just so many kind of little editor bugs and things that make it kind of frustrating to work with. Um, as I've been developing my um, Netcode for Entities sample project, I created this new document called Gripes with Unity ECS. And so I'm not gonna go into detail on each of these, but I'll just kind of scroll the list through and you can kind of read through these yourselves. You can see that there's just a lot of like little editor bugs that just make it really frustrating to develop with and it's just like little things like i can't like tab through different fields in the inspector or sometimes i just get like a flood of errors in the console and if i have a debugger connected then it just kind of like you know freezes everything up because it essentially is like hitting an exception point and the entities hierarchy window is basically just broken outside of you know displaying what entities are available you know it works great for that and I can, you know, click on things and, and kind of debug them. But, you know, if I start trying to like do things a little bit outside of that, maybe like, you know, shift clicking on entities or uh, doing just like, you know, basic operations that you would expect to be able to do, it just kind of all falls apart, which is really unfortunate. And I've also noticed that the more, you know, packages and things that you kind of add into a project, the worse and worse the development experience kind of gets, it kind of compounds on each other. Like if you just use base Unity ECS, like, yeah, you'll have some things here and there, and, you know, you might get some, you know, decent frustrations. 
But then, you know, as I was adding in the netcode for entities package during this whole kind of netcode thing, it seems like the, the frequency at which I've been having these issues have just been dramatically increasing and the severity of them has been too. And it just kind of like really interrupts my workflow, which is super unfortunate. I was also recently working on a client project that used VR. And again, the just in editor experience was really bad, especially the performance was, was super terrible. I mean, you know, if I would just was like running the application directly in the editor, I mean, I was getting like 15 frames per second with like not that much things happening on the screen, but then I'd create a build of it and the performance would be amazing, like well exceeding the requirements of the project. And it does get a little bit frustrating in that case because, you know, now pretty much any time that I want to like seriously test the application, I have to create a build of it, you know, wait a couple minutes or whatever for that build to complete, then go ahead and test it. And then if there's like some small little issue, then I have to go back and the cycle continues and you guys have been there before I know. So I don't know, maybe it's a me thing, but there just have been a lot of you know, issues that I've been running into, unfortunately, when developing with ECS, even though, you know, I still really enjoy the ECS design pattern. And, you know, there, there are so many things that make it a lot better to develop with. Um, you know, but again, the Unity in editor experience has been quite frustrating. So I think that's kind of my number one issue with Unity ECS right now. I think, you know, hopefully as we start getting more and more of these releases or as Unity ECS kind of gets tied more closely into the Unity engine and becomes kind of the, you know, backbone of a lot of things, I'm, I'm really hoping that things are going to be in a much better spot at that time. And I know there are a lot of good people over at Unity who are working hard on these things. Um, but yeah, I know, I understand that these things do take time. Um, but, you know, happy to continue to work through these things in the time being. Because again, I do think that Unity ECS, jobs, burst, dots, everything is really fantastic. And I don't think there's anything really comparable on the market, you know, outside of creating your own game engine from scratch. And again, just, you know, the, the variety of tools that Unity gives us um, just for kind of general game development stuff tied in with all this high performance dot stuff. I think it is a really compelling package, but it needs to be done right. So anyways, I think I'll go ahead and end this video on that little rant. Um, hope you enjoyed this video that kind of going into the state of Unity Dots, where it is as we head into 2024. Really hoping that we're going to see more ECS games in production in 2024. And again, you know, hopefully a lot of these issues and, and new features start popping up um, as we head into the new year. So anyways, once again, major thank you to Unity for flying me out for Unite. I uh, really enjoyed it. And you know, hope you enjoyed it, whether you were attending in person or just kind of watching some of the recordings online. I know Unity has kind of been in a little bit of a weird spot over the past couple months, but again, really hoping for the best for them because they are a good company comprised of a lot of good people. So anyways, don't forget to vote for the Unity Dots Game of the Year. Again, I'll have the link to that uh, post down in the description below. Definitely looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. Anyways, this will probably be my last video of the year. So I hope you all have a wonderful holiday season and a fantastic New Year's and I'll see you all in the new year.